All right, this is the second lecture on unit four on sensation and perception. The one on the eye is already uploaded and this one is gonna be devoted to the ear. If you think about it, we hear a wide range of sounds on a daily basis. And we actually hear best when the frequency of those sounds is similar to a human's voice, which is going back to that evolutionary perspective of psychology and that we need to be able to detect humans' voices in nature. When we talk about sound waves, just like we did with uh, light waves, the stimulus input, the chemical stimulus input that we are hearing is sound waves. And then it's up to our auditory nerve and brain to transmit that into a neural message. The strength of the sound wave is important for loudness. Long waves have uh, very low frequencies and low pitch, kind of like a tuba whereas short waves have high frequencies with high pitches, kind of like a piccolo. And the measuring unit of sound is decibels. So a normal conversation being had by two humans is measured somewhere around 60 decibels, whereas a whisper would be around 20. So how does the ear work? There are different parts of the ear that you will need to know, just like with the eye. But basically, the way that the ear works is that we convert sound waves into that neural activity, just like we do with the eye. So the visible part of the ear is called the pina, and it channels sound waves through the ear canal, then to the eardrum, and the eardrum vibrates. The middle ear is what transmits the vibrations through the three bones, which are known as the hammer, anvil, and stirrup. And once those vibrations go through the three bones, they then are sent to the cochlea, which has a membrane on it, which is in the inner ear. The vibrations from the three bones actually cause the cochlea to vibrate, and it makes it fill up with fluid. So when your eardrum busts, what ends up happening is that fluid from your cochlea ends up coming out your outer ear. So the vibrations from the cochlea make it fill up with fluid. And this motion, the filling up with fluid in the cochlea, causes tiny hair cells to move. Once those tiny hair cells move, kind of like wheat in a field when the wind is blowing it, once those hair cells move, it triggers neural impulses which stimulate the auditory nerve and it eventually sends the message to the temporal lobe. So again, in looking at the diagram of the ear, what ends up happening is the sound wave hits the ear flap or the pina. It then travels from the ear canal right here to the ear drum. It causes those three bones to vibrate, therefore making the cochlea fill up with fluid, triggering tiny hair cells would end up being sent to the auditory nerve. So just like with the parts of the eye, there are parts of the ear that are important in order to convert those sound waves into a neural impulse. And just like with vision, there are different theories on how we can discriminate different pitches, just like we can discriminate different colors. The first theory is the place theory, which says that we hear pitches, either high or low, based on where the vibration is coming from. So for example, different places on the cochlea are stimulated. And when that happens, the cochlea is receiving activation on different parts. So a high frequency sound has a very large vibration at the beginning of the cochlea, whereas low frequency vibrations happen near the end. So basically the place theory just says that we hear different pitches based on where the cochlea was stimulated. The only thing is that this theory does not explain low pitches since we haven't exactly found the exact position on those for the brain. So in comes the frequency theory. The frequency theory says that pitch is determined by the frequency of hair cells producing action potentials. Remember, action potentials are the firing of the neuron. So what the frequency theory says is that the cochlea vibrates at the same rate as the sound wave. So if a wave is coming in at 100 waves per second, then 100 pulses per second are going to travel to the auditory nerve. So it's the frequency of the neural impulses, not necessarily where they're being stimulated on the, the basal membrane of the cochlea. The Volley principle 
is part of the frequency theory, and it says that the pattern of sequential firing creates this combined high-frequency signal. So if you think about literally volleying in a volleyball game, that's exactly what the volley principle says, that the sound waves are hitting back and forth based on this firing potential. Now, one of the cool things is that we have two ears. So with our two eyes, we have depth perception. With the two ears, sounds that reach one ear faster than the other cause us to localize sound. So for example, if you've ever tilted your head in the direction that the sound that you're trying to figure out what it is is coming from, that's this localization of sound. It's hitting that one ear quicker than it is the other and it's helping you to determine where the sound is coming from. Now what happens when we have hearing loss? There are two different times. You, you got the conduction hearing loss and that's when you actually have a mechanical problem with your ear. So maybe your eardrum was punctured or the tiny bones in your ear don't vibrate. So there's some type of mechanical problem with your ear that's causing you to suffer from hearing loss. And unfortunately, the only way that you can gain your sense of hearing back with conduction hearing loss is through surgery. You then have sensor, uh, neural hearing loss, and this is damage to the hair cells that are uh, vibrating back and forth. And what ends up happening are the causes of this type of hearing loss is biology, aging, heredity, uh, prolonged exposure to very, very loud music can cause sensoroneural hearing loss, which is, kills me when I hear students' music uh, that are in their ears and I can hear the lyrics to it because it's definitely going to cause hearing loss in the future. Um, you can get a hearing aid to help amplify sound or a cochlear implant is wired into the cochlea which enables the brain to hear sound. So it actually is, there's two pieces, one inside the ear, one outside the ear, and those wires are triggered into the cochlea and it helps to stimulate the auditory nerve so that the message can be sent from the auditory nerve to the temporal lobe, which is responsible for hearing. So the ear is a little less intense than the eye, but it is important that you know the different parts that I just went through. Again, make sure that you're copying down anything that is bold or blue, and make sure that you're filling in the chart on the five senses, because we will have a quiz when we get back to school.